Hey everyone, this is Lomi, and I just found these awesome images from Elizabeth Blackwell's A Curious Herbal, which was published in the 1730s. I unfortunately could not find all the illustrations or text, but I figured what I did find was a great start to making my own herbal for my dolls. Since Feral is a healer and Laylee is an alchemist, I figured it was a great prop to try. I compiled some of the images onto these double-sided pages, which I'll cut out and use for my very first attempt at making a hardcover book. Since I didn't know how I wanted to group these, or how this project was going to turn out, I didn't take the time to organize the pages in the way they appear in the original book. Instead, they're just sort of tossed in at random. I may eventually try to track down the rest of the pages to recreate the real thing, but this is a good practice run. The first step is cutting out all the pages. They'll be folded in half and stacked to make signatures, which are the individual bundles of pages that go into the book block. Before I make the signatures, I pile all the pages together and mark them with my friction pen, since it'll be erasable later. Then I poke the holes for the thread. I've read that this is usually done with an awl, but in this scale, using a needle and thimble seems to be working better for me. Then I'll divide my pages into smaller bundles and start sewing them together. From what I understand, you'd usually want to use waxed thread for this. For one thing, it's thicker and easier to knot. I only have flimsy sewing thread, and I'm still on my craft supply ban, so I have to make do with it. I looked at a bunch of tutorials for making pretty stitchery on the back of book blocks, but I don't really grasp them yet. I'll need time to learn the correct patterns for stitching these pieces together. How to make my crisscrossing threads lay nicely, how to attach a new thread when I run out. There's a lot to figure out really, and right now I'm pretty lost. I don't share as many videos of me just working like this, since I prefer to devote my time and energy to teaching other people how to do things I already know but sometimes it seems like that gives a false impression of what I can do. There's a lot of time and energy that goes into learning to do new things. Not just for me, but for everyone. And seeing people who appear to be able to instantly do anything set in front of them and do it well is, to me, kind of discouraging. I always feel like I won't be able to measure up, but all the hours they spent learning are invisible to us. So sometimes it's good to remind yourself that it's okay to be a beginner. We all start that way. After my signatures are sewn together into my book block, I clip them together so I can glue the spine. If you've done this before, you've already seen one big mistake I made that I didn't notice until this step. I'll show you what it is when I fix it. For now, I use Mod Podge to glue the spine. 
From my understanding, you're also supposed to put a piece of mesh or canvas over the spine to help glue it into the binding. But I didn't have anything thin enough, so hopefully I can get away with not using it. I don't think it'll make a big difference for something doll-sized. But I'll try to get proper supplies next time I make something like this, since by that point my craft supply ban will be up. I use a scrap piece of cardboard to start the cover. I make this a little bit bigger than my pages, so there will be about a 1 8 of an inch gap on all sides of the paper. The spine of the book needs to be as wide as the book block, plus the width of the front and back cover so I figure a quarter inch is good for that. I cut out all the pieces with a razor blade. Then I prepare the end papers, using brown cardstock that has a pretty texture. Measure twice, cut once, maybe measure two or three times, I don't have a lot of this paper. These are what go on the inside of the front and back cover, and they also attach to the book block to help hold the pages in place. In my book, this is all that's going to be holding the pages in place, which is why I decided to use something a little heavier. They look really nice, and I think they'll look good with the color I picked for the cover. But these are exactly what I forgot about when I was printing my pages. The end papers get glued onto the outermost pages of the book block, and mine have things printed on them. I'd lose my text and my little page for notes if I glued these to the block. So I'll try to fix it by adding a few extra pages at the front and back of my book block. This was a really big mistake, and I read enough hardcover books that I should have noticed I had it put together wrong. Especially since I love books that do pretty things with the end papers, so I pay a lot of attention to them. But I guess mistakes like these are expected, since I've never tried this before, so I won't beat myself up about it too much. Lots of crafts come with steep learning curves. For the cover of my book, I picked some dark blue suede fabric. I cut out a piece a bit bigger than my cover cardboard, then trim off the selvage so it'll lay smooth. I'll make sure these fit nicely before I glue anything down, but then I glue the cardboard to the fabric using more Mod Podge. I leave a gap between the spine piece and the cover pieces that's a little wider than the cover pieces are thick. 
This is some pretty heavy duty cardboard, so I want to make sure it can close. I clip the corners to make it easier to fold the fabric, but I'm not sure how close I need to cut them. I guess I'll start by gluing down the edges and see what happens. It's surprisingly hard to get the fabric to stick. Maybe next time I'll use a stronger adhesive. My corners are really gappy and baggy, so it looks like I need to cut them closer to the corners of the cardboard. Of course, that ends up not being quite right either, because then the fabric doesn't overlap. More learning curves, I guess. No going back now. I think this happened because I forgot to account for the thickness of the cardboard. Silly mistake. I glue my end papers to the sides of the block, then spread a whole lot of glue on the inside of the cover. And on the end papers too, because that will let me slide the block around to get the best fit. Next time, these will go on after the pages are already glued into the cover by the canvas that'll be on the spine. But for now, I check to make sure everything is aligned well and then press it together good and tight. I clip it so it can dry for a bit. Then, after it's mostly dry, I can add a little decoration to the corners of the cover with gold paint. I don't want to invest too much in this, partly because I have no idea how good this is going to look when it's done. So just a hint of fancy is good for now. Suede was probably a bad choice for the cover, because it picks up every speck of dust in existence in my workshop. I see a couple dark places where the glue bled through too. Maybe vinyl, leather, or a thicker fabric next time. And here we go, my finished book. Even though this was my very first time trying to make a hardcover book, I feel like it turned out pretty well. And it's really interesting to see all the plants that were popular back when this was written. I have some of these in my garden out back, but I use them for cooking. I also think it's interesting that the tomato plant is labeled as a love apple. I almost forgot they called it that back then. That's labeled suckery too. And we call that chicory here. Mm -hmm. 
I'm pretty sure this one on the left is a carnation, but it says clove july flower. The one on the right is chaste tree, which is uncommon, but it's still called the same thing at least, so I know what that one is. But I'm gonna have to look up some of these because I have no idea what some are. Uh oh, some pages got stuck. I must have had some glue bleed. At least they don't get too damaged when I pull them apart. And yeah, that's it. My first book. Now can you imagine doing that for a whole miniature library? Wow. I feel like I learned a lot, but that's all for today. Thanks for watching. Bye.